So I've just made the world's largest Porsche bumper. I don't know if that's exactly true, but I'm not gonna check. I'll give you some stats though. I don't even know if I can carry it. So that's 68 pounds. That is a massive bumper. I also think it's got the most surface area of any Porsche bumper. For some of you who are new, let me tell you what's going on. So I've got this 2014 Porsche Cayman and we're doing quite a bit of modifications to it, including this bumper. I printed out a scale model of the Porsche. Then I used clay to create my own design. With the help of some viewers, we got it into a digital form and now we're 3D printing full scale parts. So I've been partnering with Big Rep, who's allowed me to use this printer to help print the parts for this project. Stay tuned and we'll walk you through the process of making this bumper. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Today's video is sponsored by Sterling Kit. And what I have today is the Semto engine. It's the NF2. I like to explain this, that this is really just adult Legos. So they give you this kit with all the components to actually build an engine. Not only that, at the very end, you actually have a functioning engine. So like Legos or puzzles or things like that, it is a great way to spend time, keep your mind active, doing something fun. So maybe you're not up to building a full car. You can build this little engine in just a few hours. It comes with all very finely made pieces and a assembly instructions. If you're interested in high-end model making, this is for you. I'll leave a link in the description below. So I forget to do this sometimes, so I'm gonna recap for those new viewers. Again, there's probably at least two of you that YouTube has recommended this to. So this is for you. I've got three builds that I'm working on. This is the 1958 MGA. Up here we have a Nissan 300ZX from 1992. Let's not forget the fan favorite, the 2014 Porsche. So this 3D printer is gonna actually help every single project I work on. But for this episode, we're gonna be talking mostly about the Porsche. So as you can see, we've got lots of the panels that are stripped off. And with the help of some viewers, we're actually creating a new design and 3D printer is gonna be a pretty big part of that. All right, I've got some new product to try. This is called Gloop. So basically I've got uh, 3D prints where I just need to join sides and there's not a lot of surface area and this is specifically formulated for 3D prints. So we're going to give it a try. So it comes with like some syringes and applicators. I'm going to try three different uh, methods. So one is just going to be super glue, one is going to be the Gloop, and then the other is going to be JB Weld. And then we'll just clamp all these together. All right, it's been about an hour or so. Okay, so that was the super glue. The middle was the gloop, oh, that's what I remember. So it's got pretty good. So yeah, the gloop was better than the JB Weld, which is good. Well, that's good enough for me. We're gonna go with the gloop. All right, we are busy printing away. First pieces we're gonna make are at the rear of the car, the bumper, and we're calling it the bumper cover. We've got a couple pieces here. We're gonna actually join our first pieces here of the bumper. So that one's gonna go in here, but I'm also gonna try some, like a hot glue gun, just so that can uh, hold things in place while glue sets up. We've attached the first couple pieces here. So I essentially put on a whole bunch of super glue and then um, these are just popsicle sticks that are held on with hot glue. So those will peel off pretty easy. But this is an easy way to make sure like this surface is kind of follows the same there. So these are all called like tangent from that one to that one, making sure they're all on the same line, same plane. All right, Big Rep also does their own printing. So if you have a large job, they can print it and ship it to you. All right, we have, I think, all but two pieces for the rear bumper. So we're gonna start putting them together. It'd be a little bit like Tetris, trying to fit them all together. Got my popsicle sticks. 
my baby hot glue gun. I've got these sanded and cleaned, so we're gonna go ahead and try. We'll let it set up for a little bit. doesn't look precarious at all, does it? This way I don't need clamps though, it got a lot of weight on it. But yeah, that's a large section of the rear bumper. Got more sections to go though. And I still need to print, I think two more. So this segment, I think, uh, gets flipped up and joined here. And then this is gonna be uh, one of the sides, that one. So we've already got one of those on, that one's gonna be on the other side. And this is like the very, very edge or very wrap around. So I am learning with this gloop stuff that um, it kind of, I'm gonna call it melts the surface, almost like if you got it real hot and then you wanna put the other one on. You want a good deal of pressure and then you also wanna do it quickly because after it kind of melts the surface, you need to get those two melty surfaces together and then with some pressure. So if you wait a little bit too long or you don't apply enough pressure, um, it doesn't give a good bond. But I think with those uh, key steps, I think we're able to get some good bonds. So right here, I'm gonna put this piece on that piece and I'm just gonna rely on the weight of these. There may be a couple pounds. Um, ideally, I'm sure you'd like to put uh, more clamping pressure, but I just don't have any clamps that are four feet long. All right, so we've got a very large section there, another section there. This needs to get joined to that. Man, I don't know how I'm gonna do it because uh, a lot of the surfaces are not flat and they're a little bit delicate, you know, it's like those little wings and things. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see how to do that. And then I've got some of these smaller pieces that are gonna be kind of more of the uh, underneath diffuser. So I gotta get those together as well. So we tried the gloop on this one. It was just really challenging because we can't really clamp it. We have to hold it in place and we just weren't still enough. So we're gonna try some JB Weld. Like way more towards you, way more, way, 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 like that. Well, the thing that's nice is it, it's got, um, I'll call it some stickiness. So the other stuff, yeah. no stickiness. And so just the fact that it's able to kind of stick that way, if you kind of like have any little movements, it's not like going everywhere. So we're starting to make some progress. We've got a large portion of the bumper done. Um, some of these other pieces I'm struggling to put together just because I can't clamp them and hold them. They don't have a large surface area. So I went and bought a plastic welder and that's gonna help aid with the bonding process. So we started this effort to 3D print what would be the bumper. Um, since then, we've kind of learned that maybe it would be better to make the mold, but we had already printed a lot and we're just gonna keep going on that track. So we have a lot of the rear bumper made up. We just have a couple last parts and we can now assemble it all. Well, uh, one of the joints just gave way. So uh, we'll have some repair work to do, shoot. All right, as you can see, we're most of the way done. Um, what I've learned from some of my assembly techniques, hot glue is kind of okay to, I'll say, temporarily hold things in place if you're using something else like epoxy that takes longer to cure. Have been using some of this glue. It works pretty well. However, with very large parts, it's hard because you have to kind of cover the area on both sides pretty quickly and then press them together. And again, I don't really have clamps and things that, uh, are well suited for that. Um, I did get myself a plastic welder and that uh, works really well to kind of keep things in place with some of the metal, I'll call them staples, also to secure the joints with heating the 3D printed material.
Also, because we had one of the joints fail, um, I kind of tested some of the others. It seems like they could be strengthened at the very edges, meaning if you saw a lot of force, you could actually see the edges open up a little bit. So I went back through all of them and added some of these metal staples as well as welded plastic around the edges as well. All right, it's time to join some big pieces. I've got most of the bumper there, but I've been working on this one here. Need to get those ones now together. Should be interesting. One more thing before we put the other piece on, we actually have tail lights. So here I've got some tail lights. These are out of, I think, acrylic or Lexan. And essentially they're gonna go right here in between this piece and that other piece. So I kind of need to get them in place, which means just uh, drilling some holes, getting things held. All right, so I've got this one now that's on and in place because um, there's not a support between there and there. So meaning this whole middle section, um, I just worry it's gonna be not super rigid or otherwise I could probably just make one. But now we're onto the last piece, the last part. So you see there's a kind of a, a fin there and a fin there. So we've got, I'll call it a whole diffuser that goes in between there. So we'll have to see how best to kind of balance this while still trying to get that all made up. All right, this is getting wide enough and heavy enough that it's putting a lot of stress on some of these middle joints. So I'm kind of helping just with a ratchet strap on top to kind of help keep things together so it doesn't pull so hard. Because even if we've got really good um, bonds, it's only like two or three walls thick. So again, we're talking just about the strength of the material itself. This is kind of the underneath, uh, I'll call it diffuser. So this one, this one goes in between here. Those ones go like that. That all gets put on right kind of here on this bottom surface. So yeah, this is gonna be so large and heavy and unwieldy. I don't know, I'm excited. It's gonna look cool. Um, there's still, after we get it to look cool, there's still this big question of like, how do we make it out of a robust material like carbon fiber, but uh, I'm anxious to get this together.
All right, we are going to be moving the bumper into position. Okay, so this has got to go under. It's, this side has got to go down though. It's got to tilt down. Let's see. Where do we want this to go over? Under? Are you holding it with a lot or is it resting? I'm starting to let go. I'm resting pretty much. Okay, because I'm resting all the way. So something when I was, so I think right here. Yeah, if you can rest it like so it's like right there. Man, that is gonna look so mean. All right, I've got uh, some LED strips. I'm just gonna try it out here if I can. Nice. How does that look? That looks sinister. Man, that looks amazing. I feel like the camera's washing it out a little bit. Let me try to get a better view. Yeah, that looks sweet. So this is really clear acrylic or Lexan, and I think we'll probably wanna get it frosted, but that looks so good. All right, we'll switch and go for brakes. Oh yeah, looks really good. All right, we're gonna try one more time at night, see if you can show any better. All right guys, here it is, what do you think? I think it looks sick. It's just amazing. The composite struggle is gonna be real though. It's gonna be really challenging to get all this done. All right, that does it for this time. So we create content like this just about every week. We've got a couple different builds going on. So please consider subscribing. See you next time. I've just made the world's biggest, largest 3D print. Well. Stay tuned. Uh, let's see. Stay tuned and we'll. Not focus. Okay. Gosh, what's your problem? And do it again? Are you good? Oh. Come on. There we go. The 3D prints are. Uh, what am I saying?